morning. We are here at Sylvie Crochet Facebook Live. And I'm here with Ashley of Heart Hook Home. Um, all right, just a second. Before we get started, since people are still joining us, let's see if I can. Uh oh, sorry if you could hear that. Okay, so. Oh no, I did it again. Sorry, everyone. All right, Ashley, how are you Hello. today? Good, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Ah, sorry, I'm trying to watch the Facebook feed. Wow, okay, wow. now I'm ready to not be distracted anymore. How's it going? I, so everyone out there, you didn't see this, but literally five seconds before we started going, Ashley's husband came in and handed her <laughs> coffee at the exact right moment. He swooped right in. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming you're drinking coffee. Are you drinking coffee today? It's actually an espresso. I think it's an Americano. Ooh, ooh nice. And I am drinking yeah. co coffee with cream this morning. How about everyone out there? What are you all drinking today? And I know it's not morning for everybody, but for us on the West Coast, it's still solidly coffee time, 9 a.m. Um, so coffee time is all the time. <laughs> coffee time is all the time. <laughs> we have so many people joining us today. So good morning, Marion and Barb is here from Ontario. We have another Heather, Heather, Heather Club. Nice to see you. And Marilyn from Moore, Oklahoma is here. Diana, Becky, Becky's from Michigan, Jamie. And everybody's talking about what they're drinking for drinking right now. Coffee with almond milk creamer and no sugar. Um, and Caitlin says, hi, everyone. So cool to actually see Heather versus hearing you on the podcast. Do I look like what you thought I looked like? <laughs> I wonder what my voice makes me look like in your head. Um, Becky's drinking orange juice. Bonnie's drinking Diet Coke. So we have so many people coming in. I think it's because they want to see you, Ashley. Yay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so Ashley, tell us a little bit about um, your blog and what you like to, to crochet and design. Well, I am Heart Hook Home. Or I run Heart Hook Home, right? And um, really, my passion has always been for crocheting useful things for around the house or things using cotton, I guess. I like to use a lot of cotton. Um, I just like to come up with different ways to use yarn or in a way that is unconventional or unconventional, I suppose, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. How did you get started with crochet? Actually, my little brother taught me how to crochet. Oh, yeah. Tell, tell um, us that story. He learned from when he was in high school, his high school girlfriend's mom crocheted and his girlfriend wasn't interested at all. <laughs> so she taught my brother. And oh. Yeah. So he made baby blankets for my kids when I had my kids. And of course, I haven't been crocheting as long as my kids are old. Right. So he would make baby blankets and he made my other son, my younger son, a snuggie and all kinds of stuff. And when he came to visit one year for Christmas, we sat down and he was here for several days. So we were able to make a few scarves and he really taught me the basics. And after he left, I just ran with it. So here oh, we yeah. are. <laughs> So when you learned to crochet, what, what did you, um, when did you know you were like in love with crochet and this is your thing? Um, honestly, it took me a while. Um, my first few projects were really wonky and I really wanted to knit. I really wanted to be a knitter because my sister um, is a knitter and she's really great at it. And she's made me sweaters and things like that, which before I was like oh that's cool and now it's like man she made me a whole freaking sweater yeah. man like that's a lot of work you know yeah. so it's pretty awesome but I really wanted to be a knitter but I'm I just love the versatility of crochet and everything that you can do with it I feel like it works up a lot faster and yeah. it's just I don't know it's more fun to me I just caught on to it a lot faster yeah I know I think I think now that I realize how long it takes to knit sweaters and knit socks and all those things I'm like I don't think I ever would have the patience to actually knit a sweater. It's yeah. <laughs> already enough to like commit six weeks to crocheting a sweater or whatever. So yeah, um, my sister, I just finished a, a top not too long ago. Everyone knows because I talk about it all the time, but the floral tapestry <laughs> top from issue two of We Crochet Magazine. And my sister, when she saw it on Instagram, she was like, can you make me that but in black and white? And I was like, nope <laughs> no I cannot you can make it yourself you <laughs> because I only have like limited 
crochet time for myself and I just can't take commissions because I don't have enough time to do all the things that I want to do. We have so many people joining us. I can't even say hi to everyone. So thank you everybody for joining us. Really appreciate it. It's so good to see all of you. And if you aren't familiar with We Crochet, because you may be coming from Heart Hook Home, um, we are a crochet site, like a website that sells yarn. We sell hooks, we sell um, notions and crochet swag. So you can get your enamel pins and your tote bags. Um, we have uh, vinyl tote bags that have an actual crochet hook lining. So you know that it was made for you instead of a generic needle crafter. Um, anyway, so check us out. That's at crochet.com. Um, you can follow us on all the social medias as we crochet or we crochet official. Um, and then if you like this kind of Facebook live, don't forget to subscribe to our or like our page and also sub subscribe for notifications to know whenever we're doing Facebook lives. And we've just gotten started doing Facebook lives over the last couple of weeks, but I think we're settling into Tuesday mornings at 9am Pacific. So Mark it on your calendar because I know there's no other fun stuff for you to go out and do at 9 a.m. on Tuesday. So um, yeah, come join us every week. Uh, okay, we have more people. I'm going to say hi to a couple more people. Barb wants to know if we crochet delivers to Canada. Yes, we do. Um, we deliver to Canada, the UK, Australia, and the USA. Um, and there is free shipping available for everybody if you hit a certain, um, if you buy a certain amount of stuff. Different for each country, I think. Um, and Chris Lopez says, Ashley's designs are so awesome. Meadow says, love your stuff, great yarns and prices. Uh, and then Patty says, love Ashley and love Brava Sport yarn. Yay. Okay, Ashley, what have you been crocheting lately? Actually, I have a little secret. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is, but oh. it is um, in preparation for Father's Day. So this Ooh. is what I'm working on today, actually. Ooh. And I had to frog it a couple times yesterday. So I finally found my groove and we are cruising right along. So hopefully this will be ready. Oh, I don't know. It could be as soon as tomorrow, depending oh. on how well this goes today. So <laughs> nice. What stitch but, are you yeah. Can you tell us what stitch you're using? I am using the Thicket Stitch, which is also known as the Suzette Stitch, which oh. I have a tutorial for that on the blog. And I love the way that this is working up. It's coming along beautifully. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's got a nice weave to it. Oh yeah, really pretty. Right? Yeah. And I let Paul pick the color since it is for Father's Day, Aww. right? Like he's the only one, you know, hopefully none of your other fathers in your lives are going to know what it is before father's day oh, right. but i wanted to get it ready so that you can get it ready before then so hey the life Yay. of a designer you have to work several months in advance at least that's true so um speaking of which how how planned out are you over the year like do you know how far in advance do you know what you're going to be crocheting um that could be the same day <laughs> i really don't um i don't schedule things out unless I have um, something very specific that I want to publish on a certain or an idea that I've been floating, have floating around in my head, you know, when I say, mm -hmm. okay, well, I'm definitely going to do this for July 4th or something. But for the most part, I just fly by the seat of my pants. Oh, nice. And whatever I feel like making. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a fun way to do it. I, I'm that type of person also. So I have things in my queue in Ravelry, but I feel like once I put them in my queue, I don't necessarily want to make them anymore. Like, it's just a weird one. And then there's always um, just experimenting with different stitches and different other yeah. ideas. It's always really fun. I feel uh, like those are three distinct separate hobbies. Like finding patterns is one hobby. <laughs> <laughs> Playing with yarn is another hobby. Yes. And then actually crocheting something <laughs> is a totally different thing. <laughs> right. Like the thing they say about like shopping for craft supplies or shopping for yarn is totally different. Yeah, definitely. Definitely true. So we just posted your tutorial, Ashley, on the Thicket or Suzette stitch. So check the... <laughs> the comments on this Facebook Live to see that link. And um, Ashley, Teresa wants to know, show us what you're wearing. Can you tell us about what you've yeah, got on? Yeah, actually, today I am wearing the Wanderlust shawl. So this is ah. what is in the picture for the live video <laughs> yesterday, right? I and I, I asked Paul when I was getting dressed, I have, this is my spring vest, right? The one that I just published that uses Brava yarn. Mm -hmm. And I love the sheen of this one. It's so pretty. But I said, um, should I wear the Wanderlust or should I wear the spring vest? And he said that this one is just gorgeous and I should wear this one. So here I am. Aww. I love the fact that this has pockets. And you can put your cell phone in it or whatever yeah. you're going to carry that, around. Yeah, it's my it favorite looks, part. 
it looks like the perfect thing to wear if you're working at your desk or even sitting and crocheting or exactly. going out. Yeah, it looks pretty versatile. You could probably wear that a lot of different places. So we will post a link to that Wanderlust shawl also in the comments in a minute. So you can find that. And that's a free pattern, isn't it, Ashley? That one is not. Oh, it's not a free pattern. Okay. But the spring vest is. Okay, cool. So, but if you like it, go buy it because paid patterns are amazing and awesome. And it's worth paying your friendly neighborhood crochet designer right? for their <laughs> lovely designs that they work on all the time for you. Okay, let's see. So. I think I wrote this about you, but I said that you're known for um, your confident crochet patterns. Do you think that your patterns are like confident? Would you consider them that? You know, one of the main comments that I get, um, it's kind of humbling, I suppose, in a way. Um, but I've had a lot of different people comment that my patterns are beginner friendly or that they're confident that when they make something using one of my patterns, they know it's going to turn out right or mm -hmm. they know they're going to be under understand what I'm telling them to do you know so I, I I feel like yes I feel like most of my patterns are beginner confident or yeah. even beginner friendly yeah yeah definitely and I've noticed that your patterns consistently pop up in like the top most hot patterns in on Ravelry all the time like I see your yeah. patterns all the time there so <laughs> that's something I do for fun is like when I'm at work I just log in to look and see what's trending today and so I definitely see a lot of your patterns repeating in popularity well, that's awesome. there. so yeah I don't ever I very rarely check that so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't before I worked for for we crochet I, I I had a Ravelry account from a long time ago but yeah I wasn't on it every day but now I am so find me there you can find us at the we crochet group and chat with us there um oh man I had another question for you oh no actually I wanted to say you appear in an article in we crochet magazine issue two if you have your magazine, you can turn to the back page and there's a whole what? feature on Ashley there. There's me. Oh, look, the and here's my, I even have my pouches. I was <gasps> oh, you my and the, they're famous. How funny is that? They're famous. <laughs> they're in the magazine. Um, yeah, so the those are the, what are those pouches called? I just call them the personal pouch because you can put whatever you want in there. That's I figured right. that they would be excellent. They're the perfect size for a panty liner mm -hmm. for girls in high school if you or anyone really if yeah. you just want to put a panty liner in here and leave it in your purse and that way it's not just some big pink package hanging yeah. out you know what I mean yeah totally or, um um earbuds put my earbuds in there all kinds of stuff oh I love that and yeah. you made that out of curio which is our crochet thread um yes and so you're a crochet thread uh, designer and crocheter can you tell us like do you have any tips for crochet uh crocheting with thread I don't really have any specific tips for thread. I do have a, a tank top pattern that uses crochet thread. Um, my main thing for that is gauge. Gauge is extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, like I feel like with acrylic or even, you know, when you're making a shawl with fingering weight or something, um, at least with acrylic blend in it, you're able to stretch or manipulate those stitches a little bit more and with mm -hmm. thread it's just this is what you've got you right. know so it's not too tension stretchy. and gauge is huge that makes sense since it's so small and fine too your your gauge is really going to make a big difference yeah um, if you're if you're aiming for a specific size on something you have so many fans here they love you ashley's patterns <laughs> are awesome says marilyn excellent pictures and instructions becky says love ashley pattern she's always so helpful if you need help and uh, thanks guys <laughs> let's see we have a link for your spring vest um in the in the comments here carissa says ashley's patterns are the best always beautiful and definitely beginner friendly tiffany says excellent pattern so easy to understand so all of you out there if you're not familiar with ashley's patterns i hope you're going to rush over to her blog right after this and check everything out because you're getting so many ringing endorsements here yay there's morning. a whole section of free crochet patterns. I have dozens of free crochet patterns too. So if you want to yeah. try those out before you move on to more complex or wearables. Yeah, definitely. And I think I, I find that a range is nice. Sometimes it's nice to have a simple project, even if you're an intermediate or advanced crocheter. And sometimes it's uh, nice to have something that challenges you. So I think you have a range there also. Um, or to have one of those going at all times, a very easy yeah. project at all times. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. And then I would say too, you have a lot of garments that you've designed and I feel like you make it look like 
really achievable and doable, which we both know that's true. Like anyone, anyone out there who wants to crochet a garment, you definitely can. But I like that about your, your designs. Um, that you're very encouraging to people and uh, yeah. Thank you. All right, we have a link to all of Ashley's free patterns in the notes and um, let's see, it's, the chat's going so fast, I can barely keep up. I know. Patty <laughs> says, your latest cocoon pattern is the bomb, which I agree, I saw you introduce that on your Facebook Live last week and it's really gorgeous. I Heather's... just finished my Bravo one actually. Ooh, show us. You wanna see? I gotta go grab yeah. it just a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> While she's grabbing that, I'm going to say, mm -hmm. Debbie says, hi from Aberdeen, Scotland. Hi, Ooh. Debbie. I wish I were there with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here is my cocoon that I just finished, and this is using Ooh. Brava. It's so pretty. So it has pretty. a gray stripe that goes down the middle, and I wasn't kind of, I wasn't quite feeling it. I think it looks really nice. Should I put it on? Yeah, put it on. Let's see it. Also, okay. while you're putting that on, I just want to comment to everyone about your yarn wall which is behind you it looks amazing and i believe you have instructions for that don't you on your blog i do i do actually for how to make a yarn wall it's actually a lot cheaper than you think it is um it's cheaper it was cheaper for me to buy the pegboard and the pegs to, to hang this than it would have been for me to, to buy a big cubby oh that's good to know yeah storage awesome. thing it's not bad and my wall that's back there now um, we actually added on to it about a year ago. So now it's about 12 feet wide and about four feet tall. That's so, so cool. Yeah. You, so here's you the, actually, oh yeah. Show us your, show us your cool cocoon. 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 Okay. Turn right. Around. Isn't that nice? That's I beautiful. Just put this, the edging on it here and I love it. This one's actually the petite size. The other one is the one size. The main difference is just where it hits on, on the back ear oh, and how nice. wide it is. But yeah, I love it. That's so cool. I like it a lot. Yeah. The shine cocoon. on this Brava is amazing. Yeah, and it's such a good deal too because it's it's only one ninety nine for a hundred gram skein, so that's actually the least expensive acrylic on the market. But it's actually a premium acrylic because we don't have any middleman; we manufacture it and we sell it. So we pass all the savings along to you, and it's a really good all purpose acrylic. I love yarn. <laughs> it. Comes in a lot of colors, um, and yeah, it looks really nice when it's done. Um, it's got a great sheen to it. It really mm -hmm. does. Yeah, that's true. And uh, do you know what colors you used in the? The cocoon i can't remember this one is paprika i believe mm -hmm. yeah um and this is white and i think this one is like hawk or something like that no i think it's dove heather oh it's no, dove it's heather okay that's too that's too <laughs> cobblestone <laughs> heather oh cobblestone, <laughs> is it cobblestone? the dark the, the darker gray all right My big stash right here <laughs> yes okay i have one more question about your yarn wall do you actually use yarn off of your wall sometimes? Um, I do. I tend to only use the yarn off of the wall for smaller projects. Like mm -hmm. if I'm making something amigurumi or just something smaller. Um, because most of what I have up there was gifted to me by a friend of mine when her grandmother passed away. And it was like two or three full Rubbermaid totes, like the mm -hmm. big Rubbermaids. Um, and so most of it was older acrylic. All of it was acrylic, but most yeah. of it was older. And there's no way I'm going to get those dye lots again. Um, yeah. yeah. So I just wound them all up. And then what do you do with a bunch of cakes? You throw them on the wall, right? Oh, that's so <laughs> so cool. I usually only pull from it if I need that exact color. And I know that, that it will be enough in that one wall. Yeah, that makes sense. So what I do with all my extra random yarn is I make these things called Epic Afghans. And I just finished one. You can look on Instagram with the hashtag Epic Afghan. Um, but I just kind of use three strands of yarn all at once. And I just, it's when they run out, I just add a new one. And that's how I use up all my random yarn. Um, I thought using the three colors would really make a nice transition too. It does. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, and I'm a color person. That's my main like motivation, I think. And because you're, con you're, you're using big stitches because it's three pieces of yarn held together. So it goes pretty fast. Um, you eat through the yarn really fast and then the color shifts happen fairly quickly also. So it just keeps you going, even though it's uh, kind of a repetitive project. Yeah. So I've made like 16 of them. So that's how, nice. <laughs> that's how motivational it is. If that's my easy, like I don't have to look at what I'm doing project. Right. Um, yeah. All right, let's see. So we have a link to a ball winder and Swift if you wanna make cakes like Ashley's on her, her yarn wall. Um, and I really recommend that to anyone out there who doesn't have a yarn Swift um, and ball winder. Do you wanna say something, Ashley? I do, I was gonna show you this. Oh. Because 
sorry, I keep getting up, but I actually have two different winders. I have a large winder that I use for big cakes and I have the knit fix winder mm -hmm. that is available at Weight Crochet, of course. Right. Yep. And these, the smaller winder works so much better for doing small balls like this, mm -hmm. I think, because on my bigger winder, if I have just a little bit of yarn, it's just, there's no, really no, not even a point to doing it. Yeah. So this works perfect for that size of awesome. ball. And uh, I use the yarn ball winder from us, Knit Picks, and we crochet all the time. And it, you can even use it for bigger skeins of yarn. You just kind of have to manipulate it a little bit to allow a little bit larger of cake um, on mm -hmm. there. But anyway, I was going to say, anyone out there, if you don't have one and you don't know what it is, it's a great tool once you learn to use it, which is very simple to learn. I think you'll be like, how did I ever live without this? It's definitely, definitely one of my favorite um, highly recommended tools. I think I said that last week. I'll probably say it every week because it's true. <laughs> well, the uh, truth hurts, right? <laughs> the truth hurts. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna say hi to a couple more people and then um, maybe you can show us some of your favorite projects and uh, yarns. Let's see, Judy says, thanks for doing this interview. And Diana says, great idea on three st the three strand Afghan. Jennifer from our work says, we need that yarn wall in our new office. Totally agree. Let's make Ooh. that happen. We definitely need to do that. Maybe we need like a neutral wall and then a colorful wall. And then Sarah can stand in front of the neutral wall and I can stand in front of the colorful wall and everyone will be happy with the, the different ambiances. Um, and then Brianna is currently waiting for her first wee crochet order to be delivered today. So excited to try Brava. That's so exciting. Um, I want to shout out to one of my friends, Nisi, who just finished a sweater today and she posted it on Facebook this morning. So Nisi, congrats. Harp, harp sound for you for finishing your sweater. That's so super exciting. <laughs> and now back to Ashley, we're going to talk about some of your favorite projects. Well, some of my favorite projects, um, most of them are involving cardigans or sweaters right um <laughs> I, I did want to show that one of my recent favorite we crochet yarn projects is the maize shawl or the maize um chevron and it is absolutely beautiful for this one i used the gloss dk oh i Isn't love gloss pretty? dk it's so i know pretty. it's got this, the best colors in it um this can i hear is that the teal mm -hmm. color it is absolutely gorgeous and this yarn has the best sheen to it. I think that's like a common thing that I found with all crochet yarn or we crochet yarns is the sheen. A lot of them. Fabulous. Yeah. And the gloss, <laughs> yeah. the gloss, I believe has some silk in it. So that's part of, it's like silk and merino, I think. Mm -hmm. It is a lovely, lovely yarn to work with. Yeah. Um, and I love the fact that you can get these colors in different yarn weights. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, there's a DK, but there's also a fingering weight of yeah. it. Or yeah, lace gloss, weight. Yeah. Yep. It comes in a bunch of different, a bunch of different uh, weights and it is excellent. And also that color keen eye that you pointed out that comes in a lot of different yarn lines too, which is great. Cause that's like my favorite color. So I love that. I get excited. So maize chevron blanket is what you just showed us. I, I know I've posted a link to it on our Facebook page, but it's been a while. So we'll have a link to that also. And, um, can you tell us a little bit about the backstory on why you designed that one? May was one of my really good friends. Um, I used to work at a nursing home in the Alzheimer's unit and May was one of our residents and she was absolutely amazing. Um, she, when I worked there, she was 97, I think. And this was about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So she was amazing. Her and her husband got married in 1922 and she'd tell me stories about it. Um, she'd always tell me like her favorite drink was bourbon and water. And I really Aww. wish I could have smuggled her in some bourbon and just had a drink Aww. with her because she was the sweetest old lady. Um, but no, she was amazing. Um, she actually grew up mm -hmm. in a small town right outside of Wichita. So it was basically like Little House on the Prairie, you Aww, know. Um, cool. it, it, she was born in 1905. But anyway, um, we just got to be really good friends and she was so elegant and she always had her lipstick on and she was just the sweetest, the sweetest soul. So I made this because this reminds me of her just with the fancy stitches and how pretty and how delicate it is. Mm -hmm. um, just a tribute to my friend May. I love it. It's so yeah. pretty. I love that story too. And I know everyone on the Facebook page really liked your story. Also, they were all really touched by your design. Yeah, so sweet. Great job. We have a few new people here. Kathy wants to know, what are you now discussing? Well, my name's Heather. I'm from We Crochet. You can find us at crochet.com and learn more about us. Um, we sell yarn and hooks and we also make 
cool podcasts and cool Facebook lives and a magazine. Um, and then I'm here talking to Ashley from hearthookhome.com and she is a crochet designer and she loves designing cardigans. And right now she's showing us some of her favorite projects. So Ashley, do you have any other projects to show us? Um, let me see. I was going to actually talk about this. <laughs> yeah, talk about it. Let's do it. Because we were talking about tools and I was thinking of all of my favorite tools that I have gotten from We Crochet. And this, I feel like in crochet or knitting, can you see me now? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> um, now this is the sweater dryer. And I absolutely love this thing because with my crochet, what I've noticed in the, the three or four years that I've been making cardigans like nonstop is you can't hang them up because the stitches on this, the shoulder will get way distorted, mm -hmm. um, lay flat to dry, right? Um, but no, this is one of my favorite tools ever because when you wash your sweaters in the washer, you take them out and you just lay them on this thing and hang them there and they're not laying on your counter or laying on your dryer, trying to dry for the, the whole day, you know what I mean? That's great. Um, yeah, anyway, I wanted to share that. Um, so we'll have a link to that in the, in, uh, the comments in a second. Um, mm -hmm. And Kathy wants to know, she's just joining us, can you uh, tell us about the pattern for the jacket that you have on right now? The cocoon. This is the cocoon. So this is my, I was thinking about calling it the quarantine cocoon. <laughs> <laughs> I decided that was probably That's not his the nickname. Best idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is one of actually this is my newest pattern, the, the brand new one that's on the blog. This uses a worsted weight yarn. So this is Bravo Worsted, um, what I used for it. Basically, we just make a square. There's a petite size, a one size, and a plus size. And you basically just make a square, fold it in all the corners, sew it up, and add some edging on it. And it's actually a lot easier than it looks. We yeah. used um for this one, I use the herringbone half double crochet, okay. which there is a tutorial for that as well. Um, it's actually a mixture of herringbone half double and chain stitches. So it's kind of like a moss stitch Got it. Um, with a the herringbone half moss. double. And it creates a great texture and it's like kind of an open weave. You see mm -hmm. my my shirt in there. It's just very nice and oh, very it's pretty. very delicate looking. Yeah. So everyone, you can uh, find that link on hearthookhome.com. We'll also post it here in the notes. Um, let's see, do you have any other highlights you want to talk about, Ashley? Not specifically. Oh, I want to ask you about something totally okay. off, off somewhere. Because I see your spinning wheel in the background. And you mentioned to me a while back that you have been spinning a lot lately. Do you yeah. have any insight to share with us on that? I am actually really excited about this new spinning adventure. Um, I've been spinning, I don't know how much of you, you can see on my wall over here, but I've got some of my hand spun that I spun myself. And then I've got some other braids that are ready to be spun. And yesterday I ordered a brand new wheel. So I'm replacing it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to list this one on the marketplace on Facebook, but cool. so I've got my new wheel coming. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to be starting several new, um, a new blog called heart hook home spun. And yeah, we are going to be learning how to spin yarn. So super excited. I've already got a whole list of things to, to share. I know especially right now when we have extra time on our hands. Um, if you're interested, now is the perfect time because you yeah. don't have to have an expensive spinning wheel to learn how. Um, drop spindles work fine. You can even make your own drop spindle at home using things that you already have. That's so, great. Yeah. I want to do that. Awesome. That sounds like super fun. Um, have you made anything with your hand spun yet? No, I haven't actually, because I'm kind of afraid to use it. It's like, I just want to stare at it and like look just at how hug pretty it. it is. Um, <laughs> I do have one of my favorite ones over there. It uh, starts out very mustardy yellow, and then it gets a little bit lighter, like a speckled, almost like a cow, mm. like black and white. Aww. And then it gets to white. And I thought I wanted to make a cowl with it, starting with one color and get lighter as it goes yeah. up, you know, kind of a fade. But then I thought maybe I should do a scarf oh. to make sure that I've got a decent uh, size of it, so you know what I mean? Because I would hate, yeah, I'd hate to work up a whole cowl and then have it only be like four inches tall, you know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so, you definitely have yeah. to plan ahead if you have like a skein of special right. yarn that you want to use. Yeah. There are tricks. I'm sure you know more of them than I do, but uh, yeah, definitely that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, let's see. So Ashley, if people want to find you in your work, where can they do that? 
I am everywhere. <laughs> so hearthookhome.com. I'm on Twitter uh, at hearthookhome, on Instagram at hearthookhome, on Pinterest, um, YouTube. My um, YouTube video library is growing rapidly. I'm actually in the process of redoing all of my beginner, beginner videos, the ones that I shot several years ago. Um, my setup now for videos is just so much better than it was then. Mm -hmm. And I've learned a lot on producing videos like that. So I'll be doing a lot more tutorials or just replacing my older ones. So if you know someone that is interested in getting started with crochet and you can't necessarily sit next to them and teach them right now because of social distancing or whatever, um, send them the link because we're going to be starting over with our basics. Yeah, it's great. Be awesome. Some people in our um, audience here were asking for beginner tutorials. So definitely go check out Ashley's YouTube channel. Um, let's see, is there anything else we need to talk about? Anything else you want to say? Anything else you're working on? Oh. I will show you what I'm working on now uses comfy worsted, right? So it's a yeah. cotton blend. Um, it's a cotton acrylic blend, mostly yeah, like cotton. 80 cotton, 20% acrylic, I think. Yes, it is. 75 Pima cotton, 25 oh, acrylic. Okay. Yeah, you were so close. I was so close. I <laughs> almost no, know this, all the ingredients to all our yarns. <laughs> this is going to be really awesome. This is something specifically for dads. Um, I guess moms could use it too, but it's it's targeted towards dads um, in preparation for Father's Day. So it's going nice. to be pretty amazing. Looking forward yeah. to that. Yeah. Some, someone does want to know, how did you get the name Heart Hook Home? And I know there's a good story behind that. So what's yeah. That? Um, well, hook, obviously for crochet mm -hmm. home is because my husband is an amazing cook and he's got all these recipes that I wanted to share. Um, I'm very lucky in the fact that I do not have to cook mm -hmm. <laughs> and so are my children because we would probably all starve. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, but, uh, the heart is because my oldest son, um, who is 13, he has a rare heart condition called truncus arteriosus and it's where basically instead of having an aorta and your pulmonary artery coming out of the top of your heart he just had one huge one mm. so it was sending he wasn't getting um, oxygen in his blood the way that he should have so they had to put in a part to basically create that for him and that part that he has has to be re uh, changed out every once in a while um, whether he outgrows it or it can start to calcify the being in his um, in that position so he's had three open heart surgeries so far and he will need more but so the heart section of the blog is really just helping other heart families or especially people that are newly diagnosed and they're like oh my gosh because when you're at the hospital and the doctor tells you your kid's gonna have to have open heart surgery just to live and you're yeah. like holy moly like you leave there and it's like an out-of-body experience almost like you're, mm -hmm. where do I go who do I talk mm -hmm. to because once you leave the hospital I mean the, the doctors are you know you can't just call them up and chat about it so I was I started this as a means or a resource for other families like mine so if you go to heart heart .com, you can um, your blog is divided into separate sections so you can read about whatever you're interested in um, and that's so cool that you have created um, a resource for other parents who are going through something that you've already gone through. That's something I love about the internet is that we can all share our experiences and um, learn from each other. Yeah. And really. there've been so many people that have found me through crochet and they're like, oh my gosh, my son has a heart condition too. Or oh, wow. so this is a nice way to connect, you know, that's something so that we never would have known about each other. Yeah. So, so yeah. I think like right now, as we're talking, my six-year-old child is, I'm under the stairs kind of where I'm sitting. It's kind of like up on top of the stairs, chomping, do, like bashing something. <laughs> uh, he's making noise because that's what six-year-olds do. Um, anyway, let's see. Is there anything else we need to talk about? I do need to tell everyone, if you want to stay connected, you can sign up for the We Crochet newsletter. Um, just go to crochet.com and there's a link right up at the top um, that says sign, for, sign up for emails. We will um, just keep you up to date up to date on what we're doing, these Facebook Lives, sales. Um, we feature crochet bloggers like Ashley in our newsletter. So you can sign up for that. Um, and then listen to the We Crochet podcast. You can get it wherever you get podcasts um, on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you listen. Um, subscribe and like us and leave a comment or leave a review once you do listen so we can know if you like it and it helps other people learn about us. Um, and then we, oh, and we have a new episode coming out this Friday on the podcast. So do that and then find us on Ravelry, all the other social medias, and don't forget to join us next Tuesday. We will have another coffee and crochet. 
a new guest. We'll post about that pretty <laughs> shortly after this one's over so you can find out who it is. And uh, thank you for joining us. And thanks everyone who commented. I appreciate everyone. I'm sorry I couldn't get to every single person's questions. And um, I just really appreciate you joining us. And we love you crocheters. We're crocheters too. <laughs> so it's so wonderful to be able to um, work for a company where I get to nerd out about crochet all day long. And then when I get off work, I just pick up my hook and start working on my projects. So I'm happy to see everyone come join us again. Thank you for joining us this time, Ashley. Thank you so much for being here. It Everybody, awesome. you have a you have a Facebook Live coming up soon too, don't you? On your own page. I well, um, I used to do them every Thursday night. Okay. Until I realized that that's when Facebook likes to do their updates, and my oh. my broadcast kept getting screwed up. Oh no. Um, and, and last year I kind of stopped doing lives, but now for the last few weeks I've been doing lives like once or twice a week, maybe okay. even three times a week. So, so it's a I just surprise. Pop in whenever and nice. whenever I've got something to say. So. Okay. So <laughs> which is so. a lot like her on Facebook and subscribe to her uh, notifications so you can find out when she's going live. Thank you again. I think we're going to say goodbye. Thank you everybody else who's joined us. Come see us next week and keep crocheting and we will too because we crochet. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Smiling as we leave. <laughs>